Our world is full of inexplicable ancient buildings. Buildings like Oyantai Tambo, the Lora Caves, the Indian Steppe Walls, or the Pyramids of Giza. Historians believe that the ancient humans who built these monuments used simple tools like chisels and hammers. They believe ancients quarried and moved 80 ton stones for hundreds of miles and then somehow erected them 500 feet into the air. But there is plenty of reason to believe the ancients used a very different technique and I'm going to reveal it in this video. The mainstream theory fails to explain basic questions like how they lifted the stones of the pyramids. How did they move and carve 1500 ton blocks of Baalbek? That's the weight of over 20 military tanks. We need a crane just to lift just one tank and we often fail at that too. Carving and lifting a 1500 ton boulder alone would take decades of work. Not to mention the impossibility of doing it without machinery. What about the walls of Oriental Tambo? The stones are placed so closely together and so perfectly that you cannot even fit a hair through the cracks. Every stone matches perfectly with the next one. What is the sorcery? Architects and engineers have proven the impossibility of the precise shapes and placement of these blocks. Yet mainstream historians are telling us that ancient humans were primitive. I've been studying ancient sites trying to find a theory that explains it all. And I think I finally have a clue. To devise a good theory, it needs to address the four inexplicable questions that make ancient sites so puzzling. 1. Mechanics. How did they lift the stones? 2. Transportation. How did they transport 6 million tons of stones from the quarry to the construction site? 3. Precision. How was construction so precise? And 4. Speed. How did they build so quickly? So let's answer the first question. How did they lift the stones? Well, what if I told you that they didn't lift them? The Great Pyramid of Giza contains 2.3 million stone blocks, but most stones weigh around 2.5 tons. This means they could effortlessly slide with the help of levers, but they remain very difficult to lift. Some engineers suggest that the ancient builders slid the stones on the ground because it was physically possible. But engineers forget about question number two, transportation. Nobody can move 6 million tons of stones for hundreds of miles without technology. Geologists have confirmed that most of the granite in the Great Pyramid came from the Aswan Quarry, which is located around 500 miles away from Giza. The limestone came from much closer though, just 10 miles away from the pyramid site. But 10 miles is still a long trip to carry 2 million stones, each weighing over 2 tons. So hear me out. The only possible explanation for how these guys pulled it off is this. Step 1. They find the stones. Step 2. They break them down with hammers into dust and sand. Step 3. They carry the dust in buckets on camels or horses. Step 4. They create simple molds from wood and pour in the dust, mixing it with cement-like binding liquid or water. Step 5. They've gotten themselves a geopolymer that lasts forever is indistinguishable from natural stones and grows stronger with time. This might sound far-fetched at first to you, but a scientist called Joseph Davidovitz came up with this theory years ago. He believes that Egyptians mix limestone particles with natural materials and binding agents. That way they produced a synthetic stone that looks identical to natural limestone. Because it consists of broken limestone, natural glue, it's indistinguishable. This mixture, according to Davidovitz, was poured into molds directly at the pyramid site. His theory helps explain some of the mysteries of pyramid construction, like the incredibly tight joints between blocks, the precise structure, and how the massive stones were supposedly transported. This answers all four questions about mechanics, precision, transportation, and even speed. Davidovitz points to a lot of evidence supporting his idea. Some pyramid stones lack the usual tool marks, and some blocks are surprisingly uniform. But the argument that proves his theory is chemical analysis. 
Chemical analysis shows that there are slight differences between the pyramid stones and the natural limestone found nearby. The pyramid stones contain a few percent less limestone. This greatly supports his theory and it might mean there is binding agent in the stones and that they are artificially made after all. So if the video is correct, it would mean the ancient Egyptians had much more advanced chemical knowledge than we previously thought, not just moving stones, but creating them with the help of natural binding agents similar to modern concrete. To prove his point further, Davidovitz and his team created similar blocks from geopolymers in France and they look 100% identical to the blocks in Egypt. Not to mention their composition is the same and scientists can't distinguish them from the real pyramid stones. This is unarguably the best and most logical explanation of how the pyramids were built that I've ever heard or read. Opponents of this theory have come forward with arguments that not all the stones are the same, but that is of little significance. Each stone was molded separately at the same time. This means they used many molds and there is no reason for them to be 100% identical. Some Egyptian blocks are so precisely cut that you can barely see where one block ends and when the next starts. Perhaps it's because the builders didn't cut these stones at all. They simply use the wall of the existing block for the mold of the next one. That way, they are 100% touching each other without any space between them. This theory stands strong. But sadly, it doesn't explain other ancient sites like Ollantaytambo, because obviously the blocks here weren't molded. They have sharp edges, strange forms, and interlock in magnificent ways. Peru and South America are filled with similar stone walls that nobody knows the construction method of. I've never heard a plausible theory about how these stones were created. A YouTuber recently came up with the idea that they were melted stone. Although it makes some sense that this texture was soft, in my opinion this theory is misleading because it doesn't explain the fittings. A few days ago, while researching these walls, I was eating a corn cob, and I couldn't fail but notice how similar the cob kernels and the Peruvian wall stones are. The stones used in Peru were obviously not molded. Just like the kernels, every single stone is different than the others, but the stones were either molten or created by the builders. They were not found like that because it's not humanly possible to find such stones. They weren't sculpted either, because again not physically possible to reach this level of precision. The only possible way I can think of for the stones to be this close to one another and to fill in the cracks between each other perfectly is for those stones to have grown or to have been softened. They couldn't have been molded because they're all different shapes, but take a look at how a corn cob looks. It consists of hundreds of different corn kernels. All of them have grown next to each other and every single one limits the growth of the one next to it. That way they all grew simultaneously but they grew differently and filled in the entire space that they had. In nature rocks grow the same way, but they grow out of minerals and form over long periods. Does it sound so impossible that the ancients could have somehow sped up this process and grown their own rocks? I honestly am skeptical about my own theory, and I should be. <laughs> it sounds far-fetched. It's just a suggestion how different their technology could have been from ours. After all, it's physically possible. Nowadays, we can grow crystals quite fast. And we recently rediscovered how to make Roman concrete, which actually heals any cracks in the stone anytime the stone gets wet. The limestone activates to fill in cracks anytime it's wet with water. That's how the Roman structures lasted for thousands of years, even in bodies of water. I'm sure there is an alchemical process to make these megalithic stones that was lost to ancient peoples, that we have yet to rediscover. Ancient builders undoubtedly had access to forgotten knowledge, but that doesn't necessarily mean something absurd like lasers, levitation or aliens taking part in the construction. The Inca legends themselves say they were taught by a bird how to soften the stones. 
I think there may be some truth to that because there are various plants that grow out of rocks and their roots work in a very interesting way. The roots of these plants produce an acid that allows them to dig themselves into the rock by softening it. There are many stones and rocks that support this hypothesis of softening rocks. Obvious finger marks and hand marks on the stones as if they were clay ones. We know how hard clay becomes after it cooks eventually. The more ancient sites I examine, the more convinced I become that prehistoric builders had access to forgotten technology. Mainstream historians tell us that just 10,000 years ago, our ancestors were hunter-gatherers and lived in wooden huts, but we find remnants of much older civilizations. Ruins of pillars, intricate carvings, golden treasures and gigantic stone blocks that we can barely lift today. And all of them are thousands of years old. We always marveled at how ancient builders lift heavy stones. The truth is, they never lifted anything heavy. By using geopolymers, they had to transport just sand instead of heavy blocks. This process is quite simple. If you have the right materials and the right knowledge. This explains the construction of many high and precisely stacked structures. Sounds super easy, very possible, and much more probable than aliens levitating stones or slaves building them. The only thing that this requires is a lot of knowledge. Advanced knowledge of chemistry, physics, and how materials work. Of course, geopolymers don't explain every single advanced ancient building on Earth. There are many others that we still know very little of. I go and visit as many of those sites as I can. Recently, I visited the ruins of a castle that is believed to be 50 million years old, and the columns are made out of cement. Of course, mainstream historians don't believe it's man-made, but their only argument is that 50 million years ago, there were no people alive. But we don't know that for sure. The columns that I am showing now were thoroughly studied and they consist of magnesium calcite cement and all of them are confirmed to be 50 million years old. So if humans were not alive back then, who built them? Check out my next video to see the answer.